Shalom, this is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I have an important message about your leaders in the Christian church. Your bishops, pastors, reverends, and ministers are all lying to you and leading you straight to damnation. The truth is, you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans are the biblical Israelites, according to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Jesus Christ is a black man with white wool hair, according to Revelation chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. We as the Israelites must keep the commandments in the faith of Christ to receive salvation, as it is written in Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. I've challenged and debated Christian authorities all over the world on these issues. Not one of them has been able to negate this truth. Your pastors have led you astray, worshiping pagan holidays and false gods, just as in the days of old. So join us on our mission to restore the true nation of Israel before the decree goes forth. The work is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Visit our website at israelunite.org or call us at 855-484-4842 to learn more and visit our schools. Shalom. You understand? So, so let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. If you want, if you understand, you keep the Sabbath. Wait a minute, sister. Come in real quick while you get that fire. Come, come here, brother. Don't, don't run away from the teacher now, because the brother said he understand. How you doing? What's your nationality? I'm black. You black? You black? Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you straight commander right now. Take your hat off with me, though. Not you. You. Oh, I didn't do take, take, man, I don't care about your hair. Look at my boy. I got bald spots in my head. Boy, ain't nobody worried about your hair. But look, look, look. Hey, you know why I told you take your hat off? And why I told you keep yours on? And y'all listen to me. Because I'm your brother. And it was already in spirit. We got a lot of rebellious spirit, but y'all came up here and just listen. I didn't even read the Bible. Now let me give you the scripture. Read what you got. First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. Come on. But I will have you know uh -huh. that the head of every man is Christ. Is this your way? Sister, friend. your friend, okay, me. And the head of the woman is the man. So the head of every man is Christ. The head of the woman is the man. You understand that? You understand that? Who's the head? Wait a minute, you pointing at yourself. I, I told you. Read, I, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Boy, the brother didn't trick me. Got hot out here. Read it again. And the head of the woman is the man. So the head of the woman is the man. And the head of man is who? Oh, wait a minute, brother. I said the head of man. The, man. the head of man. Read it again for the brother. We're going to get there. Just here we go. Come on. <laughs> Come on. I appreciate that because that let me know you listening and you actually thinking. But we're going to read it again to help you out. All right? Read what you got. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of every man is Christ. We all have a head. We have to answer to somebody. So the head of every man is Christ. All right, see? And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is who? The man. So who's the head of the man? I mean, who's the head of woman? The man, right, me? And the head of Christ is God. The head of Christ is God. So now you got God, Christ, open it up a little bit. God, Christ, man, and woman. And then man and woman get together and do what? They made children. Right. So the children, who's their head? The father, right? And then the father instruct the mother how to deal with the children. So in the, in the Bible, we got order. Correct? Yeah, Read. Right. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered. You hear that, big boy? Yeah, yeah, Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered. I'm going to help you out. We're reading the spirit of prophecy. This is the spirit of Christ, the Bible. That's why I ask you to uncover your head, because every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So when I was reading the scriptures and your head was covered, you would be dishonoring who? Your head, God, Christ, man. So your head, God, Christ, man. So focus and learn. Wait, wait, wait. No, you would be dishonoring your head. Who is your head? Christ. Your head is Christ. The sister got it for you. Okay, okay. So keep reading. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered—that's why I told you don't uncover your head. 
dishonor with her head. See that? Now, if you're not married, your head will be leadership in the church and then straight to Christ. That's what whatever is teaching you. So now I'm going to help you out a little bit. Put that hood a little, for, little, little forward more. Yeah, put that thing all the way on the crown. Now you're in the building. That's what this is how our foremothers walked around. They had hair wraps. Why do you think when you see that syrup bottle, not your mama, which is actually a name in the Bible, they had her with the hair wrap on. All right. Now we wear it as a style. And when you go into Christian church, what do they do? They put them big ass hats on and block all your view. But the custom came from the Bible. You understand what I'm saying? Now you paying attention to me, baby. So y'all said y'all were friends. Y'all, you know, y'all friends, friends, and y'all just cool. But okay, do y'all date? Y'all date. So now let me show you something. Cause we did, it's crazy how we, y'all was getting off the bus. The young couple was getting on the bus. The older gym, yeah, they were boyfriend and girlfriend. They were kids, but y'all are older. Let's see what the Bible says about knowing each other for a while and being friends. But if this your woman, this is supposed to be your wife. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Somebody asked right. me who, hey, listen to me. Somebody asked me, hey, who, man, this is my wife, right? You're supposed to be proud of that thing. Right. And then you as a sister, you feel what I'm saying? Right. You should be proud to be his wife. This is your Lord. Right. But when you're ready, you shouldn't be laying with her if you were not. You shouldn't even be dealing with her in a certain manner because now you make her out to be a whore. And the Bible said, do not prostitute the daughters of Israel. You understand what I'm saying? I got you. So this is my sister, and I'm going to tell you straight, you're not supposed to be dealing with our sister like this. And the same for you. He's supposed to be your Lord. He's supposed to be your king. And then I get an argument, now I'm going to holler at Tashonda, or you made me mad and we separate. Now you're defiled, and he's running to another sister, but Tyrone just slept with Tashonda, and he didn't went dealt with her, and then he come back and deal with you, and now he's passing along AIDS. I'm about to read all that in the scriptures. Give me that Hebrews 13. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. Uh -huh. Marriage is honorable and all. No, I know her for a while. Marriage is honorable and all. That's just my little boo. Marriage. That's my friend. Marriage. Oh, that's it. We kick it. Marriage is honorable and all. When you get married, you put a covenant in writing. You put have a covenant of writing with the court because we're in the land of America. And they say you're married. No, okay, we married and I put it on a piece of paper and I gave it to you. No, that's not marriage according to the Bible. You have to have an instrument of writing. Read. And the bed undefiled. This is how your bed is going to be undefiled. I know you got a question, but let me finish the scripture. Read. But whoremongers, see, right now you can be considered as a whoremonger. You understand? And adulterers, and then if you're married and then you're sleeping with somebody else's wife, you're an adulterer. Or husband, you're an adulterer. Read. God will judge. You don't want God to send judgment on you. And let me give you one of those call of judgments in this present time right now. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 61. You know what I want? Sir. Let me show you. This is why, man, the Bible is simple when you have a man of understanding to break it down to you. But we've been having Christian pastors to teach us the Bible. We Hold that. Give me do the, uh, Jeremiah 23 and 1. Let me show you about these pastors. We talked about these pastors. You pastors are being put on notice for leading our people astray. You let us astray all places to the most high we want up and came into this truth but now you're leading our people astray and we come to correct that foolishness read what you got jeremiah chapter 23 verse 1 come on whoa be unto the pastors it said destruction be to those pastors you in these churches you're accepting tithes you're not teaching marriage you're teaching all prosperity doctrines read that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor you destroy and scatter the sheep with your different doctrines you're teaching baptist methodist uh pentecostal you can do this you can do it oh sister mary you might Assistant, stay in the church with me until one o'clock in the morning. That's foolishness. Right. The Bible said destruction to you for leading our people wrong. Now go to Deuteronomy 28, verse 61. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 61. Also, every sickness and every plague. Wait a minute. The Bible said every sickness and plague. I can't find gonorrhea in the Bible. I can't find syphilis in the Bible. It lists certain things, but it said every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law. That's not written in the Bible. COVID-19, it might not say that word, but he'll put that on you, read. Then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So your swine flus, your bird flus, your AIDS, your HIV, your COVID-19, Yo, yeah. your black yeah, syphilis, yeah. your gonorrhea, and so forth and so on. Y'all understand that?
generation is men leading by example. Oh!